What is up my Squirtleites, it is I, your King, back with more Let's Play Pokemon Leaf Green. In the last episode, we took on the first two members of the Elite Four, and in this episode, we'll be taking on the last two. Alright, starting out, I have Fluffy in the front, okay? He is going to be the star of this show, hopefully. I'm just really hoping this works, because this is what I've been anticipating for the whole Let's Play, is this fight right here. This is Agatha of the Elite Four. Agatha! As a kid, was the bane of my existence. She is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the hardest trainer you fight in this game. Okay? Without a doubt. At least for the first part of the storyline. Okay? She is very difficult. She specializes in ghost types and poison types. Alright? This is what, one of the reasons we have Fluffy. So let's try to throw out a Shadow Ball. It's going to use Double Team, which is a bit cool, but whatever. Um, her Gengars are such... A pain. Such a pain. She has two of them. She also has a Haunter, an Arbok, and... I forget what the other one is. Um, a Golbat. There we go. Um, she's even more difficult in the next... I mean, because um, you will fight these Elite Four members again. C come on. You will fight these Elite Four members again. However, um... Uh, like, I haven't even said... I haven't said that before. But yeah, you will be fighting them again, and they're all going to be a lot stronger the second time you fight them. Um, however, that time, Agatha is not the most difficult at all, by any stretch, okay? So, I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna save on that. I'm gonna throw a, a flamethrower. It's gonna use Confuse Ray, which, again, is the bane of Fluffy's existence. Um, hoping Quick Claw will activate a little bit more, but this is where he needs to shine, because her Gengars are really the reason this fight sucks so badly. Ah, don't kill yourself. Um, just because they are so freaking strong. Alright, there's the Quick Claw in action. Please attack. Yes! Alright, so down goes Gengar. Hopefully she won't throw out her other Gengar next, because we have another Pokemon that's going to be very important for this fight. Um, so next she's going to throw out Golbat. For Golbat, I am... I'm going to use Gekigami for um, Golbat. So actually there's three Pokemon that are going to be important for this fight. Um, Golbat, Poison Flying type. This is definitely her easiest Pokemon. Uh, well, actually no, I wouldn't say this is her, this is her second easiest. Uh, her easiest is her Haunter because it's not fully evolved. I mean, it's the only one that's... Well, I mean, Golbat technically isn't fully evolved, but it was in Generation 1, so... Anyways, down it goes. I mean, it's still got um, better base stats than, I believe, Haunter does. So next is her Arbok. Her Arbok is also quite a pain, but it's just a poison type, so we're gonna send out Shrew Yu for this one. This is really the only Pokémon he's designed to fight in, like, this entire Elite Four run. Um, so, that's why he was the lowest level. I actually um, put less emphasis on him than anyone else. But he's still important for taking on this Arbok. It's going to use Iron Tail, which isn't going to do that much because it's a physical move. I don't think this will take out the Arbok because it's an Intimidate, but... should do... yeah, it should do quite a uh, fair amount. And then another Earthquake, and it should go down. Even a Critical won't kill him. Alright, sweet. So down goes Arbok. And then she's probably going to send out her Haunter taken. Let's see. Alright, good experience. Yes, now she's going to send her Haunter. Flo uh, Fluffy should be able to take this thing out in one hit with just a single Shadow Ball, because this is her weakest Pokemon. It's also her lowest level Pokemon, if I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, actually, was Golbat lower level than that? It might have been. Oh, come on! Seriously? Uh, hate it when Hypnosis hits. It just bothers me, because it's so freaking inaccurate. I don't, I don't think it was that in like uh, it's got a 55% accuracy. I don't think it was that inaccurate in um, Generation One. Not positive anyway. I think it was. A l I think it had a lot more, uh, a lot better accuracy in the older games. But regardless, playing the poke flute to wake Fluffy up. All right. And ha, sucker! That's its strategy: is using hypnosis and then Dream Eater. It's gonna use hypn. What the heck? Two times in a row, man. Two times in a row. Uh, that's just all that's all just luck right there. It's probably gonna try Dream Eater again, so I'll just wake Fluffy up. Poke Flute really just kinda breaks the entire um sleeping strategy that other trainers have, because you know, it always wakes up a Pokemon without fail and can use it in a limited number of times. So that's good. Oh, it used Curse. You suck you douchebag. You douchebag. Oh, curse. On normal Pokemon, it will lower their speed, but then raise their attack and defense. But on ghost types, they'll cut their HP in half to lay a curse, which takes out one-fourth of your HP every turn. So after four turns, your Pokemon will go down no matter what, unless you've healed. 
Ugh, that is a just that was a dick move. All right. Um, because of that, I'm actually going to switch um, Fluffy out because Curse will just kill it quickly. So ne next is her Gengar, her final Gengar. Um, what should I use for this one? You know, let's go for Bastion. Maybe Bastion can try to take this thing out. I am going to heal Fluffy on the first turn, though, just in case. But this is what Fluff, uh, the other um, um, battle that Fluffy's Shadow Ball technique is perfect for, because ghost types are just it's not really until the physical special split I mean generation one they were really broken but in um, generation two and three they're still incredibly you know overpowered because of the um, until like the physical special split just because of their stats and whatnot and ugh, they're such a pain not to mention the fact that they all have levitate so ground moves aren't super effective on them they're just such a pain in the butt right, so this one has sludge bomb which it does get same type of attack bonus for Okay, that sucks. Didn't do a lot of damage though, so we'll just use bite. Wow. Special defense much? Oh well, this thing has a citrus berry anyway, so I guess it's all the best it's got on us is sludge bomb, so I'm I'm not gonna even worry about healing um Basaran. It's gonna heal now. It's pro well actually maybe it won't, because the citrus berry will bring it back into the yellow. Oh 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 my gosh! Oh, nope, Sludge Bomb took it out. Alright. Well, now we have Fluffy, and we can just use a, a Shadow Ball and take this thing out. And Fluffy will get all the experience for it, too. So, let's just do that. Uh, I wonder if it's going to use Hypnosis, though. <sighs> well, there you go. Just getting really unlucky with that. It's hit three out of four times now. And, well, I don't know, 75% versus 50. What, it's, actu it's actually 55%, so, eh, I don't know. The odds are sort of in favor of that. Alright, what am I doing? Go to the Poke Flute, please. Use it. I think this Gengar also has Dream Eater as well. Dream Eater, if it hits, though, is devastating. Base power of 100, accuracy of 100. Not to mention the fact that it sucks health. It's super powerful. And it didn't even use it. Okay. Well, it's going to use Sludge Bomb instead. And, oh, don't do that. Alright, if it uses um, Hypnosis again, I'll probably... Oh, there we go! Click Claw in action, and Gengar goes down. Sweet. Ugh. That is by far the toughest Elite Four member, um, if you couldn't already tell. The next one is pretty tough, but, I mean, definitely tougher than the first two, but not as tough as her. She is always been the bane of my existence as a child, but um, she was actually easier than Bruno this time, just because I came prepared. Alright. Alright, so let's use our... Let's just heal up our team real quick. Just decided to spare you all of that um, healing nonsense. And now for the final member of the Elite Four. This one was very interesting as a kid because, well, you'll see in a second. But this guy is hes quite popular, let's just say that much. Now we're actually going to want to start out with Gekigami here. And let's talk to him. Ah, I've heard about you, Levi. I lead the Elite Four. You can call me Lance, the Dragon Trainer. You know that dragons are mythical Pokemon. They're hard to catch and raise, but their powers are superior. They're virtually indestructible. There's no cl being clever with them. Well, are you ready to lose? Your le league challenge ends with me, Levi. This is Lance, champion of the Pokemon League in the Johto games, but in this game, he is just the final member of the Elite Four. Pretty much the champion as a result. Um, he's going to start with Gyarados. The reason he was so interesting is because dragon types were... I mean, no, well, first of all... There was only one dragon family, but there was also only one ghost family um, in Generation 1, so that was a bit obscure. But Dra um, Dratini, the single dragon type you can catch in Generation 1, was incredibly hard to come by. So m for most people, you didn't even see um, the in any members of that family until you got to this guy. So it caught a lot of people off guard. Not to mention, in Generation 1, they only had one weakness, which is Ice. Um, which is why I taught Ice Beam to Basaran. And in Generations 2 and 3, um, dragon moves finally... Um, did damage. The only dragon move at the time was Dragon Rage, but that did a set damage of 40. Um, so it was, so it, you know, it was pretty much useless against them, I and mean, it wouldn't be super effective. Generation two and three, they finally um, gave moves that actually did more that didn't just have a set damage, but um, that were Dragon. But at the time, they only had one weakness, and that was Ice, and they were they were just they were super powerful and quite scary. Now there's Dragonair. Um, both of his Dragonairs have some. Um, like Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, um, kind of, you know, those just moves of that type, you know, base power 95, accuracy of 100, 
Um, they also have moves like Thunder Wave. Um, I don't think any of them have um, moves that it ac they actually learn by leveling up, to be honest. I, one of them might have Wrap. Well, then again, they do learn Thunder Wave leveling up, but regardless. Um, so he's going to use... Oh, he's probably going to heal. That's so close to the red, he probably will. So I'm going to actually use... Oh, wait, I don't have any damage. I was thinking I did for a second. I'll just use a full heal. And he's probably going to use a full restore. Yep. Um, he won't just use a full restore in the red. If it's close enough to the red, but still in the yellow, they'll still sometimes use a full restore. He, again, just has two. Uh, I'm going to use a... I'm just going to use Bite here. Hopefully make it flinch. Nope. Okay, it's going to use Thunder Wave again. And I'm just going to use a full heal because he'll probably use something else the next time. Uh, close party no longer protected by safeguard. And then Ice Beam after this full heal should do it in. Um, his most powerful Pokemon, though, the two that you really have to be worried about are his last two. Gyarados is a problem if you don't have an electric type, but if you do, he's really easy. Um, but his last two Pokemon are really challenging. Um, his first one that he's probably going to use, let's see if he does. No, he's not. He's using his last Pokemon last. Dragonite, his strongest Pokemon. Um, Dragon and Flying, so Ice Beam does a bit more. However, because it's fully evolved, it's going to be able to take the Ice Beam a lot better than Dragonair can. And... Ooh, okay. It's going to use probably a Citrus Berry. It Outrage, incredibly powerful Dragon-type move. It's like the um, equivalent to Thrash. However, if Faceran can go first again, Dragonite should go down to this Ice Beam. Yes! All right! Dragonite, not a problem at all. Um, Dragonite, I believe, also has Fire Blast, Hyper Beam, and Thunder. Um, so you need to watch out for this thing. It's freaking powerful. And you can also see it has six levels on Basaran, but because of its quad weakness to Ice Beam, it didn't stand a chance. And then last is his Pokemon Aerodactyl. This one is the fastest Pokemon that can even be caught in, gen in this entire game. It is so fast. It's a rock and flying type. I'm going to try to get an Ice Beam on it before it kills me. Ancient Power. Hopefully this doesn't raise all of its stats. Okay, good. Um, Ancient Power has a 10% chance of raising all stats if it hits. And, ooh, that did a good amount. If it uses Ancient Power again, Basaran should be able to take it out, and then he'll have swept the entire... No. <laughs> Never mind. Hyper Beam. Well, at least after this, it's going to have to recharge, so that'll give us time to... T Was that really necessary, critical? I mean, seriously? <sighs> Whatever. Anyways, Gekigami's going to take this thing out in one hit with Thunderbolt, because it's going to get the same type of attack bonus from it. Unlike Basaran was not... I mean, Basaran was not with Ice Beam, so um, this should do a lot more damage. And it had to recharge, so we get a free hit, and down it goes. Aerodactyl, again, super fast. It's really strong, too, and has quite devastating moves, but that's all there is to it. And Lance was not a problem at all. Basaran swept him for the most part, and he says, I hate to admit it, but you're a Pokemon master. And that's one thing I've always been confused with. Well, I'll say it in a second after we get this dialogue over with. Still can't believe my dragon's lost to you, Levi. You are now the Pokemon League champion. Or, you would have been, but you have one more challenge left. There is one more trainer to face. His name is Dan. He beat the Elite Four before you. He is the real Pokemon League champion. There it is, right there, ladies and gentlemen. The smack in the face that we all got as kids. Oh boy, we have one more fight. Oh, and when this, if, when this was like incredibly difficult for you as a kid, you were ticked because you're like, man, I don't have any items to heal my team with. I'm dying here, and then I gotta face someone who's even stronger, and who knows what he has. Ugh, anyways. But, okay, he was saying we're a true Pokemon Master. That's what I don't get. I thought Pokemon Master meant caught all of the Pokemon. I don't think it meant beat the Elite Four or whatever. Anyways, um, guys, we are going to be saving that final fight for the next video. So... With that, this has been the Squirrel King. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe if you have not already. Also, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and don't forget to check out my Twitter and my Facebook page. Links are all in the description below. I will see you guys next time for more Let's Play Pokemon Leaf Green.